Good morning, everybody, and welcome. We do know that people are still joining us, and we appreciate that you've gotten up in the early hours of the morning. I also know one or two are joining from overseas, where potentially it's even an hour or two earlier. So really good to have you all with us, and welcome to our first IITPSA DevOps User Group Dev Conference um, Collaborative Special Interest Group. And we do welcome you and thank you for joining us. This morning we have with us Candace Mesk from the Developer User Group and Rory Preddy, our guest speaker from uh, Microsoft. Good to have both of you with us, Candace and Rory. Thank you so much for joining us. From the Institute of IT Professionals, we welcome everybody on board, especially our members. I see Saba Rahimi, our Khartan Chapter Chair, has just commented. Morning, Khartan um, Saba, welcome. And welcome to everyone else. And I will hand over to Candace to carry us forward and to Rory. Thank you all for joining us. Have an awesome time. Thank you so much, Tony, and welcome to everybody who's joined this morning. It's a pleasure to be here to host this webinar with you all today. I'm from the Developer User Group, as Tony said, and the Developer User Group is the company that brings you DevConf. Um, Rory is a longtime friend of mine and a friend of the community, and I'm really privileged to be able to introduce him to you today to talk about DevOps in Flow. Um, thank you as well to the Institute for supporting us with this webinar series. We'll actually be running three. Rory's um, DevOps in Flow is the first of three. The next one that we plan to do is on data ops, and then we'll look at the human elements of DevOps, and I'm calling it people ops. So we've got quite a few um, exciting topics to bring to the community, and thank you all very much for joining. I'm going to hand over to Rory, who can introduce himself better than I could. So thanks so much again, Rory, and all the best. I'll be monitoring the chat for questions. I may just interrupt you every now and then, um, but please let's make the session interactive and let's enjoy ourselves this morning. Thank you, Candice. Um, and um, I'm, I'm excited to show you stuff, but understand what I'm going to show you also today is going to be a little bit sensational. So I don't want you to go back and go, oh, oh, that dude at Microsoft, he's showing us stuff that is like cutting edges. None of the, what I'm going to show you today, you can't go and do yourself, though. So now that, that that's over, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Rory. I'm a principal cloud advocate for Microsoft based out of Johannesburg. I have brown hair. I'm wearing glasses, and I have a nice blue T-shirt. Um, and I'm speaking to you. Um, as a cloud advocate, because cloud advocates empower everyone in the Microsoft ecosystem to use the Microsoft tools. And we empower everyone inside Microsoft to actually hear from you, though. And one of the talks that we're going to do today, and one of the things that I uh, prioritize, is on making developers' lives easier. So we're going to look at how to make DevOps easier for you, though. So in the agenda, we're going to look at an introduction. We're going to go through developer tooling, and then we're going to go through GitHub Copilot and how to use it in DevOps. And then as uh, the Azure Developer CLI, a new tool that we have on how it can facilitate that. And then we're going to look at DevSecOps and how those tools can really amplify that. And then finally, we're going to do a live demo, which may or may not fail, but that's part of the, the, the fun. So first of all, I'm going to set the stage. Copilot this, copilot this, generative AI this, everything like that. And you, you guys have heard this, and it's, it's a very trying time for me because I have to actually keep up with all of that. Um, and it's, it's an application using modern AI to assist you with complex cognitive tasks, which also means DevSecOps and how to use the, the copilots to actually do that. And that's really what I'm going to show you today um, because there are – so many, we've, we've, we've spent the last four years, um, Microsoft and OpenAI have been improving products with foundational models. And we brought out ChatGPT, we brought out Office 365, Copilot on the platform for sellers, assisted co um, uh, uh, coding with a GitHub Copilot. And we've done this really because we've done a lot of research and we've got a lot of background and it's important uh, for us to do this. Because one of the things that we really hold dear to us, and it's so important, is responsible AI. But there are a lot of bad actors that are looking at AI and saying, wait a second, I can actually take advantage of that. So it's important for us. And as we release this, you can be assured that we're doing a lot of research to make sure that it's safe, though. And we created the Copilot stack, which is an entire stack of products that uh, 
take the AI and safety, we wrap it around with the responsible AI, and you've got your tools here. So you've got Copilot Studio, Microsoft Copilot, your Copilots. We've just gone yesterday, general availability of creating a Copilot with your data, which means that you can take your data and you can go in and do that. That's hot off the press right now, general availability, meaning that it has an SLA linked to it, that if anything fails, you can go in and say, hey, Microsoft, SLA, give me back my money. Which is, which is great for you, not for necessary for me. And we also have AI orchestration, which I, if I have enough time, I'm gonna show you semantic kernel. And kind of like a Langchain, our version of Langchain. And then you've got your data, foundational models, AI infrastructure, and all hosted on the Microsoft Cloud. But I wanna show you today how to get started with that, with DevOps. So I'm gonna show you optimization with GitHub Copilot and also with the Azure Dev CLI. And using those two tools, we can kind of like get started with the Copilot stack, which is the most important thing though. I empower you to utilize those tools. And that's really what I do. I do breadth engagement, so I throw it over the fence and then you say, yay, it works, or no, it doesn't, and you come back to me though. So what is GitHub Copilot? If you haven't used it before, it, it's basically a assistant, it's like a parrot on your shoulder, and it sits there and it says, Squawk, um, uh, what are you doing? And you go, here's, and you go, here is exactly what I'm doing here. Here's the context. Can you suggest something? And it goes, Squawk, uh, you don't know what you're doing. I'm going to help you. Okay, this is a little bit old though, but we're actually using uh, GitHub, uh, sorry, Copilot, uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT4 on this uh, for that though. And it's clever. Hey? Oh, I didn't know what I didn't know until I started using it though. It's taught me about reactive programming, about you know, function even helped me code a quantum uh, Q sharp though. And I was like, okay, time to time to get real. And it works with Visual Studio, NeoVim, VS Code, JetBrains, IDE. It, it, it basically works on any development. You even have it on CLI. I even have the thing talking to me. I've got GitHub Copilot chat voice. So I go like, uh, code me a microservice. And it goes, cool, done. And it just, just does it for you. Now, I want to show you how to be super lazy with it now. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to do a live demo with you. Don't worry. Um, but I want to just show you this so we can drive home the idea, though. So first of all, if you want to start a, de a DevSecOps project and you, you want to do that, you're going to go create workspace. Now, remember, this is flow. Now, I, I, like I've just woken up and I'm going to go, okay, manager says, please go create a workspace for me. And you go, okay, I'm barely awake here. And I want to go, Okay, cool. Um, uh, how, and, and you open up and then Copilot says, okay, how can I help you? And you go forward slash, and these are agents. Basically, we've got little processes, sub-processes running in Visual Studio Code, and they're, they're GPTs. They're, they're GPT robots. And you, if you go into ChatGPT and if you've heard about ChatGPT, you know that they've just launched GPTs. And this is GPTs using your own data, which is now generally available from today. And, and I'm going to go, okay, cool, create workspace. Um, and the new, there's a new syntax. You actually do forward slash new. This is a bit old, though. But you do forward slash new, and it'll go create workspace. So I'm going to say to it, go create me a React REST application to store tasks. And my manager says, yeah, yeah, do that. And I go, yes, yes, this will take me like three weeks to do. And I go, okay, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's going to go do it. Here's, here's the proposed directory structure. And I go, cool, go create it. And it goes and creates it, and it generates the code for me. But understand, it's just a skeleton at, at this moment, though. And also, if you ask it to do too much, you, you, it's like prompting. You, you can say, please create me a, 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 an infinite number of uh, code, and it's not going to really do it. So it's created the, the, the skeleton for me. Next, I, I want to like maybe test what you've done. I don't necessarily... Uh, uh, trust what you've done there. So, uh, unit test it, please. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I want you to uh, unit test and forward slash tests. Generate unit tests for the selected code. So, I've got your uh, tasks code there. And here's the unit test that I'm going to go create it. So, I can trust what you just did, which is important. Um, and then it's going to go there and goes, okay, cool. You want to create a unit test? Yeah. Thank you for testing your own code. When I saw this first, I was like, whoa, who, who watches the watcher here? Like, you know, watchman, like who's going to do that? And 
And then afterwards, uh, yeah, please explain to me what you just did with, with that code. With uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That uh, get all tasks though. Please go in and explain to me what you just did. And you can just select it and you go, okay, cool. Get all tasks. Uh, 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 Copilot, please explain to me what you just did. This is important because I've increased my IQ by about 15 points by doing this though. Because now I can actually, I can speak JavaScript, I can speak Python, I can speak, I can speak a uh, Gobel. I'm a Gobel developer. Yeah, and then you can also generate docs for that, which is important. Because um, I want to, I want to like, hey manager, I've got like you know unit tests and docs for my code that I wrote myself, and no one can prove that I didn't write it. And then once you have it, then so that workspace, and I actually used to do a live demo that actually works out of the box. Once you have it, you understand what flow is and how flow works, and you can see we did a survey. And we said, okay, uh, what does GitHub Copilot do? And the most important thing that we took out from that is that 88% of them said that increases focus because once you have that and you can wake up and you go create workspace, create tests, create comments. And those are the, the, the three main things that people do. It's to start, it's to test your code, to get into an iterative um, space, and then to go in and to comment it out, to share with others though. It increases focus. It gives you inspiration because it starts to be fun. There's, there's, there's joy there. And, and it, it, you start to actually speak to yourself, that little, that little uh, parrot and you go, Squawk, did you know that you don't know reactive coding and you don't know how reactive stream works? Yes, I, d I did know that, but thank you for telling me that. And it, it enables you to, to go through. So you can go in and check that. And this is what I want, some, the first bit of reading that, um, I want you to go into aka.ms forward slash flow dash state to understand all of these little hiccups that you've been encountering and how you can get over them when it comes to uh, AI, generative AI, how you can use generative AI to get over that. And you, you really want to increase your focus, increase the inspiration of your team and increase your enjoyment because joy creates passion, which leads to better and happier uh, developers. Now we want to deploy. So once we do that, right? And I'm going to show you a live demo of that. So I want to deploy this. And I use the Azure Developer CLI, which includes Dev, Dev, uh, DevOps and DevSecOps built into here. So I take my, my application and I go, oh, no, cloud. Cloud, what do I do? I want to know what cloud services, what libraries we want to use, provision infrastructure and code, roles and permission, run locally if I want to do that, deploy to cloud, monitoring of observability, CRCD pipeline, app running. I just want, I just want my manager to know that I've got the app running in the cloud with CRCD and, and monitoring. That's that's all I want though. So what we did is that we we created an ecosystem with that. We we actually saw what a Terraform has, but Terraform is a licensed product. So we said, okay, cool. Let's create BICEP, which is kind of like a free open source version of that. You can use Terraform if you want, though, but we, we focus a little bit on BICEP. And then what we do is we scan your code. So that code that I just created there using uh, Cloud Native Build Packs, we scan it and we say, what is this? And Cloud Native Build Packs, which is part of the, the, the open source foundation, says, I, I've picked up this and that and that and that. that. Here's a container for you that you can actually run, though. And uh, yeah, we, we, it, it takes care of all of that. Look, at this. there's a lot to manage and think about when you, you pop it onto Azure. You don't want to have to worry about that. I've just woken up. I haven't even got coffee in me. So we do it with the Azure Dev uh, Developer CLI, which understands the process with DevSecOps, though. So we do AZD init, which basically goes in and creates, remember that, create that workspace and creates that workspace for you. We already have a, pro a, pro a project. We really created that with the create workspace, but we want to initialize our DevSecOps project. Then we do AZD app, which goes in and provisions your infrastructure. Then we do AZD monitor, which goes in and says, okay, cool, we are right. And then pipeline config. And pipeline config goes in and sets it up either in GitHub Actions or as a uh, DevOps though. And then we go, here's your app, which we have our React tasks, which I don't know anything really about React. I understand that HT, HTML X is also the new React. It was like a second ago that React came out and now I've got another thing in React. And then we go AZD app and we've got it into your cloud. So let's do, let's do, here's our, our application. We're gonna do AZD init, 
This is the application. I didn't change this. AZD init, and it's going to go AZD init, and uh, yeah, I made a mistake there. AZD init, which uh, code in the current directory. Yeah, yeah. Or I can go select a template. It's going to go, look at that, scanning your code, and it's going to say uh, use Azure. Sorry, it was too quickly there. Use Azure. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Azure Developer Containers, uh, which is uh, container apps. And then it's got it. It's got Bicep apps and everything. But it uses Cloud Native Build Packs. So you can go in there and you can kind of like yeah, change it if you want, though. And Cloud Native Build Packs is stupidly accurate in what you uh, would do that. And most of the stuff is going to go with a container there. But maybe if you, you want to do um, uh, Azure App Services, though. And then we're going to go AZD App. This is a little bit sped up that I'm going to do here. But what it's going to do, it's going to provision your application. And then because it's... Uh, JavaScript, it's going to go in and it's going to compile it. Yeah, I know. It's, and it's going to compile it multiple times and everything. I'm, I'm not even getting into that argument about how JavaScript compiles, though, but it just does, okay? We create a TypeScript that compiles. And then we're going to go in, initialize. It's going to create Docker. It's going to create the Docker image, though. It's going to go find out and it's going to patch it because DevSecOps is about patching with CVEs. It's going to update the resources for Azure. It's going to go, oh, it's even created Key Vault. Why do I need Key Vault? Because it's secure. It's going to create a container registry. It's going to create um, the apps environment here. This is sped up a little bit. And then it's going to deploy the, the infrastructure. Don't worry, I'm going to give you all the links to actually do this yourself. And there we have my task system that I have. And I've got Bar Milk. And I did this live in front of a thousand people. And I made sure that I, that I could do it though. So you've got create workspace. You've got your tests there. You've got your um, your Azure developer CLI. And then you've got your GitHub Actions running in the background there with Azure uh, Key Vault in there. And it runs with that. And this is what we're trying to reach to developers because this is DevSecOps with Flow. All of this time, I've got a skeleton. Now, if I want to improve that skeleton at any given time, I can step back and say, hey, manager, I've got all the code. It's all checked in. It uses, it's secure, it runs on Azure, it runs on my tenant, um, and now I can go in and do that. But the flow has improved, and the flow, as soon as I make a change to it, it will go in and it will run that GitHub uh, action for me. And then finally, I do Azure Monitor, I give the manager, I say, here's uh, Azure Monitor, you can go in and you can go check that everything's fine though. And that's the pipeline config, I just wanted to show you there. Um, it does work. So I've set up the job and it runs dev, uh, dev provision or Azure uh, dev deploy. And it can also use GitHub Actions. So now, this is the funny thing about Microsoft. We offer two things of everything now. And we've always done that. We've always done Java and also, you know, Microsoft Java, aka C Shop. Now we offer GitHub Actions and Microsoft uh, GitHub Action called Azure DevOps. And yeah, I, I get to say that because I am brutally honest, though. So you can go in there and you can start exactly what I said easily by going to Awesome AZD. So I help maintain the templates in there. Um, and this is one of the templates that exactly what I did there, um, but it's with generative AI, with chat GPT. So I'm going to, I did the introduction. That was actually the introduction. I know, boo, that was the introduction. And I wanted to show you how you can do flow. And now I'm going to go one step further. Now that you understand you can all do that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, we have templates that do this already that allow you to actually do DevSecOps with pre-existing templates. So you go to aka.ms and we have like 80 templates, some community driven and some Microsoft uh, owned that allow you to go in and uh, do Ruby on Rails uh, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, and they start off with nothing, and then you do AZD in it, and it, and it builds it up there. And one of the demos I want to show you is that you can do this with ChatGPT. So I was asked I, at, 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 at 11 o'clock at night, I said, they said to me, Rory, the United Nations has come to us and said they, they have a hackathon tomorrow, and they need you to do this. Okay, cool, I'm going to do it in Java. I'm a Java developer. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Rory, we need you to do C-Shop uh, with ChatGPT, uh, with Azure Cognitive Search, and we need you to do end-to-end -end DevSecOps also. And I was like, I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not ha I'm not happy. I'm not comfortable with this. And then I thought, wait a second. I know flow. I know how to increase my flow. 
by actually using these templates. And I said, okay, I'm going to go into that template there, and it's the Azure Search OpenAI template. And this is offered in this template actually is offered in Python, in Java, in JavaScript, and in C Sharp. I'm going to use the C Sharp one because I want to show them how to use ChatGPT with their enterprise data, which is generally available from today. And I, I had four hours, four hours to do this. It was in the following morning. They told me at 11 o'clock at night. And this was in front of the United Nations. And I said, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to teach them how to do RAG. <laughs> Let's go back a, a step there. I'm going to teach them how to do RAG, everyone there. And I had to teach them how to do that. So what RAG does is you've got your Azure Cognitive Search, which uh, consumes your data. And you can use any data, really. I've, I've scanned PDFs. And the, the, the United Nations says, we want you to teach the, the candidates there about uh, anti-corruption. It was the UNODC. So I go, of course, I know about anti-corruption. And I took all their documents from their website. I took, there were 50 documents there. And I said, consume, 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 consume. Take all the PDFs there. Pop it in with this, this template there and go consume it. Um, and, and create embeddings, which are nice little dots and pretty little dots and it's like Sudoku dots there. And then go pop it into Azure Open Service. And it cost me like nothing to consume it. And then I said, go create the uh, Azure Developer CLI. Um, and you can see there, the, 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 that's all their documents though. So yeah, so there's uh, 12 documents that I took there. And then uh, go consume it. And, and I pop it in their data directory um, and it, it explains to do it. And it just goes in and consumes and goes, cool, I'm gonna index all your data, which is, it's, it's small. So it, it indexes, processes all of it, consumes it all of it there. So if you have your documents there, um, it's sped up a little bit though, but it, you can see it, it takes a few seconds to actually do it. And it indexed all of it for me there. And then once I did that, it's gonna go in and deploy my actual application. So it's gonna go uh, deploy it and it uses Redis for uh, to cache. I think, is this, is this doing the same thing again? No, it's doing it again. I think I did this twice though. Okay, so let's, let's do this again. There we go. Okay, so once it does, it pops into Azure Cognitive Search. Azure Cognitive Search is like a, it's like elastic search. It's like elastic. It goes in there. It, 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 it indexes everything. It uses Lucerne in the background there. It uses Lucerne. So if you've used Lucerne before, it used elastic though. You take all your documents and then you use as uh, the Azure developer CLI. You consume all of it there. And then you go in and you've got my hackathon and they go, Rory, how did you do this in four hours there? And I go, yeah, no, 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 it's easier. I used, I, I understand how to do it to flow. What is corruption in the private sector? And it knows how to do it. And it says, okay, I'm generating an, uh, an answer. I blew them out of the ocean when I showed that. There it is. And um, it even tells you, I even showed you the thought process there. You can even see how ChatGPT actually works then. It even tells you how to do that though. Um, so, so, th but, but I, I started off with an idea. I woke up and, and you know, the, they said to me, you've got four hours to do this. And I thought, okay, cool. I can start it from the beginning. But then I thought, wait, let me, let me not start. So you can start from the beginning with the create workspace with a GitHub Copilot. And then you can use a D Azure developer CLI and you can drive home uh, that, that idea in, in that sense. And then alternatively, you can start off with a built-in template which is important to understand that you can uh, do that though. And all of these really can uh, utilize GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps because you've got the Azure Developer CLI to do that. But don't worry, I am gonna do a live demo that is gonna go very slowly through all of this. So don't worry about that. And I know a lot of you are going, ah, the little man speaks too quickly, but I'll, I will drive it home with the, the live demo with that. So what is DevSecOps? Now we're gonna take a little step back because now I'm also gonna tell you what you know already, which is DevSecOps is build, test, release, deploy, operate, monitor, plan, and code. And you do that exactly what I showed you there uh, with, with a new environment that we're going to do this. So I'm going to do my demo here, but I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, Azure Developer CLI because I've got a nice new toy that they've given me called Azure DevBox. I don't code on my laptop. I don't code on my desktop. I don't code anywhere. I actually code in the cloud because it's so quick. I've got a 16 CPU, 30, uh, 64 gigs RAM or 32 gigs RAM in, in the cloud. And I've got a, a dev environment and it's secure and it's got great specs there. And I just, I just spin it up. And it, it kind of like, uh, it, 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 it is like a Azure dev containers. 
but we we sell this because we've got now two options. We've got VS Code.dev or VS Code. You've got Copilot, and then you've got Code Spaces, which is a dev container or dev box. And all of this can use GitHub Enterprise. You see what I'm selling here? I'm giving you options. Because the, the idea behind anyone that sells anything, you need to give them the options. You give them the high, and then you give them the low. You've got GitHub Enterprise, and then you've got uh, uh, Azure DevOps, and you can do that. And then you've got GitHub Actions or Azure Pipelines, and then you've got a GitHub Advanced Security, which CodeQL, which Cloud Native Bullpacks also does. And then you've got Container Registry, which we saw that it takes the container and just pops it in and creates it, and then running on Azure. And then you've got SecOp also, which is Azure AD, which authenticates. You've got App Config, which can go in and change your config for dev tests and, and prod. Azure Monitor, which is like, here, yes, stakeholder, please leave me alone. And then you've got ARM templates or BICEP templates, policies, key vaults, Defender for Cloud to go in and constantly scan. And then you've got Azure Sentinel to say to you, we found a issue though. So in the demo, I'm going to go slowly because I know this is a lot to take in. I get, I get a little bit pushback when they say, Rory, you showed us the world and I wish you hadn't, but I'm going to show you the world slowly with that. And in the demo, we're going to go through, okay, cool. I have a dev box, everything's set up. I'm not going to work on my local PC there. I'm going to work on my uh, laptop, which is uh, loaded into um, a dev box. And I'm going to show you how to code, test, and debug on the dev box, so with VS Code. And this is what we call an inner loop. And this is really DevSecOps flow. So once you have your inner loop, remember, I might loop internally on my laptop. And I showed you how uh, AZD, uh, Azure Developer CLI, can help you with your inner loop, which is your kind of like your dev loop. And then once we have that, I'm going to push to GitHub. And you can use Azure D to set that up. But I'm going to also use uh, GitHub Actions. I'm going gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna to show you how I'm going to code this in um, uh, Copilot. And then I'm going to go to my build release cycle. It's going to go build, test scan. I might use uh, Playwright, which I'm also going to show you, to deploy it using GitHub Actions. And then I can use CodeQL or one of the other systems there to scan my code for CVEs. And then I'm going to use Azure Monitor. But I'm going to pop it on to a old school Tomcat server running an Azure app service. And I'm going to code, I'm going to live code here with GitHub Actions and a service, my, my, my daughter actually recommended to a storybook generator that says, go create a story the generative AI uh, generated story on an animal of my choice in a, uh, a web app and then go take that story and create an image from that story. All the time, I'm going to have feedback loop. So every time I do a push, it's going to go in and do that though. So I think that's my demo. Oh yeah, and I've got numbers to kind of tell you what I, I did though. Uh, God bless PowerPoint. Okay, so that's, that's it. Now I'm going to come out of uh, PowerPoint. So this is my <laughs> this is my PC, but I'm actually I've got a desktop which is broadcasting to my old school laptop. So this actually is my desktop that I'm doing on here. But then now this is like Inception. I've got a uh, a dev box here. Let's log into my dev box. So oh, do, 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 let's log in. And this is my my dev box. This this is a box that sits on in UK uh, in in Ireland. And this is my dev box. So wherever I am in the world, and I've traveled the world, I'm off to Singapore now to pr promote our Java conference, JDConf, which is jdconf.com uh, if you want to register. And I, I just load up my dev box. It's already set up. Everything's uh, uh, already set up for me. Um, and you can see everything's already set up. And I don't even close it. So if, my, if I switch off my laptop and everything, I've got everything running here already. So here's my, my top uh, Tomcat instance here. And I can actually go, let me just maximize that here. Let's just remember which screen I'm working on some, sometimes. And I can go into here and I've got GitHub Copilot. I'm gonna just close this here. So I've got the, the application working already. So I'm not, I'm not silly enough to not have it working here. I wanna say, okay, cool. Um, I want you to go in and create a project for me. And I wanna live demo this here so to show you how easy it is here. So I've got Git, GitHub Copilot here. So let's go into, where's my chat here? Chat, there we go, chat. And this is GitHub Copilot chat. And I've also got voice. If I want to talk to it, I haven't installed it there. So I, you can see there, workspace uh, forward slash new. So I don't want to do that there. I want to show you, I want to do a new new code there. And it says, what do you want to do today? And I'll go, I've just had coffee. I want to go in, 
I want to create a new, uh, no, not that, control A, I want to go in there. And this is when you, this is called copy and paste a live demo here. Uh, it's so interesting to do this as a, as a new live demo because it has changed the way I do live demos. So there I go, copy and paste, create a new Maven project with me with the pom.xml and I just sp speak through it. Uh, for a Jakarta 9 uh, servlet, which is old school servlet app using Java 17. Include the dependencies uh, for these apps there and also create a JSP file, which is like ASP, which is old school HTML with a form to call a servlet and pass a string parameter called animal. And make uh, the, the Maven group, uh, do not generate unit tests because I'm going to do that with you now. And then I go, okay, cool, done. Oh, he has a, a proposed directory structure. And if you go into here, uh, please note, you need to add the dependency file yourself. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, let's just see if does it, has it actually generated the pom.xml? Sometimes it tells you that it gets iffy when, with you. And let, let's just see, has it actually generated the pom? Sometimes if you've asked it not to do too much, it actually generates the entire project for you uh, perfectly though. But like I said, it's a co-pilot. It needs you to help it go. Uh, so it's it really generated everything for me here. I don't know why it, 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 it's 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 just like a, like a caveat. And then it's generated my uh, j uh, Java server pages file for me here. Let's just close that up here. I need a form parameter, uh, so an HTML form. And then that, that h uh, there it goes. Uh, there's my HTML form animal. That's great. I need some CSS. Don't worry. I, I, uh, I, the end result is going to do that. And then my servlet which is going to go in there, and I've asked it to do that, to say, here's an animal, go speak to OpenAI with the, the key. Uh, okay, so it, it, didn't really, it, it didn't really do all of that for me though, but um, don't worry, so my servlet there, I need to do a little bit more. So let's go into the servlet here. Let's go into the project, and then we're gonna say, uh, okay, cool, um, new chat here. Uh, I need you to uh, create the servlet for me, and generate the servlet for me. Let's go into here. How can I help you? I love you, how polite you are. Uh, generate, no, 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 no. And we wanna go into here. I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. And I cut and paste into my thing and I've, I've done this. Uh, I want you to create a servlet for me that has everything there. Add an animal generator. It needs to have a forward slash animal generator. It needs to then go and get the OpenAI key and do all of those things for me. And, and like, you, you need to know how to prompt. This is prompt engineering at, at its finest though. Uh, I want you to go in there and create a chat message. Create a, um, and then when the, the guy says, create a 30 word story about uh, and the animal type that you get in there, and then go in and create a async client. I didn't know about this. This was reactive programming. Go create an async client then. I, I read that up in there. And then pass uh, GPT-4 to the completions object. I do have my chat GPT uh, already created in Azure OpenAI. And then go in and uh, you should select the first URL and the list of the results. So I needed to understand a little bit of what I was doing though, but I had an idea and I said, okay, cool. Go in and create that. And it's gonna go in and code that for me though. But notice the flow. I, I, I had an idea, I created a workspace and then I said, okay, I need this, this, this template and go in and create the, the workspace. Now, understand Azure uh, Developer CLI already has this. It, it has this out of the box. So if you want to start in, start in from a template instead of going in and uh, get an AI to create a template for you. And then everything's created. I've got my story then, and it's going to go get at, uh, the chat completions and then go get it from Dali. And then finally, after that, I want to uh, create the playwright piece. So I say, okay, cool, play, create a playwright test for that. Um, I need you to create a playwright test. I'm working for a playwright test for a web page, and I want you to go in and show he has a playwright test. So it's, it's a simple playwright test. Check that the, the, the code is actually generated. And then I've got my uh, YAML file for my GitHub actions. So I, I know what I, I, I want for my GitHub actions. And then I'm gonna say, okay, go create a, a, a YAML file for my GitHub Actions. I need a build job, it's as simple as that. It's gonna go in and uh, compile my Maven. And then I deploy it, and I want you to deploy it to an existing uh, Azure app service that you have there. And then uh, done. So I, I've got the flow already, but I'm using Copilot as their little parrot there. Squawk, uh, do you, what do you wanna do, Rory? I wanna wake up and I wanna go, 
create a project uh, in a language of my choice. I don't necessarily know if I understand uh, you know, Python that well. And then go create my GitHub Actions, use my secure uh, credentials. If I want to start in with Azure Developer CLI, I can actually do that. Um, and then I want to go in and create it. And I did all of this. And then I have my application here. So it's, <laughs> it's already created here. And I've got my application. Then I've got my animal generator. And I've already created it. And I've tested it. I've got the, the player I test. And I've, I've created it. So let, let's go in. And I'm going to show you the, the playwright test for it. So let's go into my, my playwright project here. I'm going to maximize here. And I've got my playwright uh, project here. And it says here, OK, cool. Uh, playwright here, uh, go that, that little code there, go call animal generator and give it an animal and call it a dog. Um, and then go check the story exists. And then go wait for the image. I've got async await there. And go wait for the image, though. And then I didn't really understand Playwright too well to understand how async await works. And this is also a language which isn't my forte, which is TypeScript. But it helped me understand how to do that, though. And then I've got my, uh, my Tomcat application uh, started. And uh, let's just go restart that again. Let's go. Uh, so let me, let me show you here server actions. And I want to show in browser and localhost here. And let's just go make sure this is running here. Let, what, what, Candace, you remind me of a, uh, a, 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 a bird of paradise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bird of paradise, because you're so lovely, lovely. And then we go bird of paradise. Um, and then we go, OK, cool. Uh, let's see if this, this works. And now I can debug. I don't have really enough time, though. But at any given time, I can debug my local instance, though, to go say um, that, oh, there we go. Uh, a story in an emerging uh, jungle, a solitary bird of paradise dance, vibrant feathers fluttered, a radiant, that's not a bird of paradise, that's a peacock, um, a radiant display of beauty capturing the mate's attention. Okay, okay I'm married, okay, Candace. Uh, whoa. Um, it's a uh, passionate ballet <laughs> transformed the forest into a, um, a, a love arena, though. So, but that, that's what I did. No, but okay, cool. Now I want to I wanna go test that now. I'm going to go run into... Uh, my unit tests here, and I want to go, okay, cool. And I've got the show browser. I want to uh, st start uh, the browser there. Remember, this is on dev box. This is in my PC. This is on a dev box, and, and I could also use this on a dev container. I'm going to run this now. I'm going to run end to end, and it's going to go through, and it's going to do that now with a dog. Remember what we did is a dog. There, and there's a, a dog, though, and a quiet brown, and then it runs through all of that, and I've got everything. Now I can say, cool, everything is running here, Go push it to Azure. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go to GitHub Actions. Um, I want to go into my Tomcat test project here. And we're going to go Animal Generator. And I'm going to go, OK, cool. Where's that readme.md? And I'm going to go uh, for, <laughs> you can see I've run this before, for Candice. Can Candice, that's not how you spell Candice. There we go. And now, uh, and I'm going to go into there. And I'm going to say, cool. Uh, done, done and dusted. I'm going to go, okay, uh, it's, it's on a repo already. I'm going to go, uh, yes, always. Commit them directory. Always commit directory. Okay, so now we need to go a pull also, though, because I probably uh, didn't check this. There, sync changes. Of course, live on air. So, yeah, there was, there was this, though, but everyone wants to see you uh, react on live on air to any, any type of issues. Um, and then now we're going to go to GitHub Actions. Remember the GitHub Action file? And now live on air, we're going to go and we push that. So we want to see, we pushed it, and I've already created the Azure app service there, but I could have used Azure Developer CLI, which uses Terraform or Bicep to go create it. And we're going to go into here, and we're going to go see that it's building my application. Remember, all of this was created with GitHub Copilot. Why do I need to, to know how to do this when GitHub Copilot already told me how to do the build? It uh, knew how to do uh, build with Maven. And then when if I wanted to deploy, I can use the Bicep templates or Azure Dev, uh, Developer CLI to actually go check that. Let's go check the deploy there. So it's going starting job. Um, and this is on my, my uh, personal profile. And this is very cheap to actually run. So it actually is uh, running on GitHub Actions on my personal profile. Nothing you saw there except for the dev box. Would, uh, is on anything but that isn't on my personal profile. I am using my uh, Microsoft 
to host it when I do host it, but then I delete it afterwards. So all of this is kind of easy to do with your inner loop for free and, and then as you progress through that though. Uh, GitHub um, uh, Copilot is free for open source or for students, but you do need a license if you are going to use it in an enterprise. But it's also, once you do that and you understand the flow behind it, you, you say, hey, hey, manager, give me that, give me that, please, and I, I need that though. And then deploy. So let's go in and we see that we've already deployed it here. So finally, I'm going to do dragon. Dragons are, are not animals, Rory. No, dragons are animals here. So we go, uh, yeah, dragon. And, and then we go, okay, cool, uh, uh, let's see if it does it. Now, this is on Azure. You can see there, I've got my application. You can go to Tomcat uh, RP uh, ZA dot Azure uh, Web Apps. And there's a dragon story in a remote kingdom, uh, blah, 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 a dragon. It should have actually said to me, Rory, it's not an animal though. But what I've showed you here is I've got my inner loop with, and then I've asked Copilot to help me to get the flow to do that. Or I could use Azure Developer Scylla to go in and use cloud native build packs to go in and uh, help me from the start. So it's top down or bottom up that I can choose either one of those though. All the time getting the best industry practices for using Key Vault, if I used Azure Developer CLI container registry, um, and, and going through that using GitHub Actions and helping myself really find joy, which is the most important, is what cloud developer advocates do really, it's to help you uh, find joy here. And I'm using DevBox, which is secure. It's even more secure than my laptop. You can see there, and I can show you that I'm using DevBox again though. So if I go out of here, uh, let's go out of here. Uh, let's go here. There we go. That's on a dev box. Um, and I can just minimize that. And there's my laptop again. <laughs> Sometimes I have to go, where am I? Am I on my PC or everything like that? Um, so we're almost out of time. I could do a Azure Developer CLI demo also, but I'm not going to do that right now. I want you to get started with that. And let's go slideshow from, from current slide here. So I want you to get started with that. And I want you, and we, we have everything ready. And I work with a hundred, hundreds of developer advocates who make sure that you are, have the best experience. So you can download GitHub Copilot, get it working on any of your IDEs, do exactly what I said. It's even better than what I showed you there because we push it changes every day. You can go to aka.ms forward slash copilot dash chat. You can use the Azure Developer CLI. You can get started with that. We have tutorials with that, aka.ms forward slash Azure dash developer slash CLI. And then finally, you can use and learn from all the templates. You want to do bottom up, it'll teach you all of that. You want to do Python. We don't have COBOL, but we have Ruby on Rails. We have uh, uh, Java, which we, I'm going to showcase also in the Java conference, which is jdconf.com. And, and then you can learn. So you can go ak.ms forward slash awesome AZD. Thank you. I'm Rory. I'm going to hand it back to Candice now. Rory, I'm sure that if you could hear the audience, they'd be giving you a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for that. I am absolutely blown away at how much is possible um, with actually very little experience, I suppose, of this whole world of DevOps. Um, what does that mean for the DevOps engineers and the DevOps teams in our organizations if our developers are able to do all of this at a touch of a button? We get that often. And there is some, there is some fear involved with a lot of people. When I show them this, they take a step back. And some have gone as far as saying, Rory, don't show this to the teams and the people that. And we, 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 we understand that people are afraid of their jobs, we are and of, of their livelihood. But we understand also that in three years' time, everything that isn't connected to AI is going to look broken or stupid. The, the, the tide of change, you've seen everyone announce this, and now we've got Sora and everything. And the same thing is coming to DevOps, because we, we understand that DevOps is like, you know, here's a grenade, throw it over the side there. But they don't have to do that. So a lot of the things that I showed you with GitHub Actions, that was generated by GitHub Copilot. And so much so, you can use cloud native build packs to, you, to check for your CVEs. So the, the DevSecOps is, is, is increasing logarithmically exponential as quick as it is with DevOps though. But the nice thing is that it's not being forgotten. 
You can get GitHub Actions, you can use Azure DevOps. All of those templates that I showed you with awesome AZD, you can use, uh, you can just do pipeline config and it sets up everything and it's learning about it. So it's creating joy and I've, I've learned so much. I've learned like how to react to program. I've learned how to use Azure OpenAI. I didn't know a lot. I, I did this demo before and I went, okay, Rory, the UN, United Nations is calling. Go do it, though. So if I can do it live for the United Nations with four hours notice, um, with DevOps also, then you know that this is battle-tested. Because as a developer advocate, I go back to the product teams and I keep them honest. So if there's an issue, you come to me and you say, listen, Rory, there's, there's an issue here. And I go back to the product teams and go, uh, 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 uh. don't deliver uh, products to my people that ha have issues on them. Thanks for that, Rory. I've got some questions for you from the audience here. Um, the one is a, it's a broad question, and I think it's posed to anybody really who's joined the call today to share about Copilot for creating or editing test plans in DevOps. Um, just curious about people's experiences. Rory, what can you tell us about that from some of your clients or some of the people that you know are using these products? So I want to take a step back and, and also explain Playwright then, because Playwright is also a test plan. And in that, then, you, you need to code it in a language that Playwright can understand. So you can have multiple languages. Now, I can code it in Python, in Java, in JavaScript, but you can also code it in Gherkin. It understands that. So you can take your existing Gherkin syntax. And I've done and behavioral syntax also in that sense, though. And you can go in and Playwright will help you and, uh, and, and really complement your Gherkin syntax. So old school Gherkin syntax with Cucumber is not going away. You want to take that, you want to run it with Playwright, um, which is a Microsoft-driven tool set. So it, it, it really helps you know that Microsoft supports it. And you take your existing test plans and go create that uh, Gherkin syntax, and then you can automate them. At the same time, if you want to do it manually, you can. You can use the, uh, the DevOps processes um, in GitHub Copilot, like I've shown you. And then you can go in, you can deploy your applications, and then go in and create your, your test plans manually. Though. So we offer uh, that. But understand, in three years' time, you're going to want to jump on this bandwagon, really, to, to go in and create all the automation. It's so exciting. And I think it just offers all of us the opportunity to move our careers into kind of a broader space. Um, you know, if you're a test analyst, you can become a, a technical test analyst or a test engineer, if you like. It's quite incredible what's possible. Um, a request, please, to put your links into the chat, Rory. I think it will just make it easier for people to um, click onto those. And then there was a question about on-prem as well. So can these services be used for on-prem? I know you've shown us on the on the dev box virtually. But what, yeah, how, how does that work? Okay, so I am on-prem. I'm in my home office. So this <laughs> is definitely there. But remember, it's a container. So if you use container apps, it's really a container. You can say, how are you creating this Docker instance and just run it locally on Docker. So I don't want to undermine, you know, Azure because, you know, it pays my bread and butter. But it's a container. If you're going to run mm. that, but friends don't let friends run their own Kubernetes clusters, okay? I've, I've lost more Kubernetes clusters than I've had uh, hot meals, though. So if you run a container, a lot of these services are containerized. So once you have that, you have that container, then you can go, cool, I can just run it locally in that sense. But we want to encourage you have that inner loop and that outer loop with the feedback because you also want to monitor this. And the whole point of cloud is to be able to go monitor to cut costs. Now, normally, in, in historically, you want to increase exponentially according to you know quarter on quarter uh, increases. So they say, how much do you need? And you go, uh, I've got a, a, a forecast around that. Now, when you monitor it, you want to cut costs, and you want to say, how much can I save on that though? You can't really do that uh, locally on a, um, a, a local instance though, because you really bought the hardware. But with cloud you can go in and you can cut your costs, which is the novelty that we've seen now with more and more people who are adopting that. They monitor, they say, oh, wow, our service here isn't using as much compute. Lower the costs there. Maybe use a serverless function where necessary here. Use container apps and then go down to almost nothing. This is costing me like three cents a month to run that application. 
That's super economical. Like, I don't think I can do anything for three cents a month. <laughs> Um, thank you very much to, to me, Leroy and Kevin for the questions and the requests there. I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. Um, Rory, how will people get in touch with you? I'm sure you have a, a slide. Oh, I'm on Twitter. My DMs posts. are open. On, I'm on LinkedIn. Remember, the whole, the whole novelty is that I'm available to people. That's the whole novelty. Like you, you pinged me, Candice, to go, okay, cool. These people need to, you to speak in such and such. And I'm like, cool. They're like a bear. So Love I'm gonna the put, enthusiasm. Uh, pop, pop on my Twitter, you know, until Elon kind of like cancels me because I'm too controversial. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not controversial at all, though. Um, I'm gonna put there. Uh, is it still HTTPS? Uh, I, I'm trying not to dead name Twitter, which is X though. Uh, uh, Twitter.com forward slash Rory Pretty. Yeah. So just go in there. I'm also on LinkedIn. I don't have my LinkedIn off by heart, though, but you go in there. I was voted by Analytica. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter as the number one cloud uh, social media uh, allowed human two years running. So please follow me. I do a lot of nice little stuff. I even do memes occasionally. I've read some of the articles that you've put up on LinkedIn, and as much as you uh, you joke here, um, I, I find you profoundly interesting and uh, absolutely knowledgeable on the subject. So thank you for what you bring, Rory. I'm, I'm going to, to hand that. it back to Tony. But thank you so much for joining today, everybody. Thank you, Rory, for presenting such a fascinating set of slides and demos. Um, brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Candice. Thanks, Rory. It's been really awesome. Very, very interesting. And um, without shaming anybody, I'll let you know there's at least been one international connection on the on the webinar this morning from Europe. So at least one, there may be others. And um, it's been very, very interesting, a little bit above my pay grade, I think. But uh, thank you, Rory. And I think that certainly looking at all the uh, hands of applause on the chat, everybody has enjoyed it very, very much indeed. So thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing. To all the delegates, the attendees who've been on the webinar, thank you for joining us, especially to our IITPSA members and to those who come to the Developer User Group and the Dev Conference. Rory, to you and to your, uh, your sharing your knowledge and expertise with all of us, thank you ever so much. And may I wish everyone a truly wonderful Wednesday. Have a good day all. Thanks and bye for now.